right, we're going to walk through a quick example of running a time series regression that contains an autocorrelated error and using a first difference transformation to possibly correct for that autocorrelation problem here in our studio. So I've got us started with two variables. Uh, obviously, just for the purposes of an example, you'd never really run a regression with just a y and one x variable. But we've got from our Federal Reserve Economic Database using the get symbols uh, command from the quant mod library in our industrial production index and the unemployment rate for the US. And I've got a couple lines of code there that cleans it up a little bit. I'll put those in the description. And we are ready to run a simple example. Let's call it reg one regression one. And we'll just do unemployment rate as a function of industrial production. Again, just for the purposes of example. So I've got this little group of data called TS example two unrate as a function of industrial production. Something like that. And we can take a look at it. Break one. And we've got our coefficients, level of significance, all of that. And again, Nothing, nothing that we could see from that basic regression output would indicate whether or not we have an autocorrelated error. So we can do the the quote unquote eyeball test, right? Look at the pattern of the residuals from that regression, uh, see if it indicates that uh, clustering kind of a sine wave pattern indicative of positive autocorrelation. Uh, so we can call up the residuals from this regression, call it res one resid from reg one and we'll go ahead and uh generate a simple time series plot of those residuals so plot res one equals l something like that let's make that a little easier to see and we definitely do see strong indicator, visual indicator of positive autocorrelation there. Um, and again, we can verify that with our Durbin-Watson test. Let's call up the LM test library and apply the DW test command to our regression. And we get a Durbin Watson set of 0.06. Um, so we could go look up the critical values. That's well below the lower critical value. Remember, a Durbin Watson set of two is indicative of no autocorrelation. As it approaches zero, that row term, that correlation coefficient amongst error terms approaches one. We're definitely there. Um, and then we have the p value here really close to zero. So we can strongly reject the null of no autocorrelation. So one option available to us is to transform our y and x variables into their first difference form. So we're going to create the differenced version of our original data. So we will create a new variable in our TS example 2 data set, we'll call it D unrate, that will apply the difference operator. So we C parentheses diff and then the name of the original variable. Which of course is our oops, dollar sign unrate. And then call that back up and swap out unrate for our other variable in the pro. So now we're going to run our transformed regression, and let's call this diff reg one. And it's just going to be OLS, but with our transformed data. Right? So D unrate will be our dependent variable as a function of 
D end pro. And again, we're not going to be able to see uh, anything in the uh, regression output table to indicate whether or not we have autocorrelation. We're going to have to, again, look at the residuals and look at that uh, Durbin-Watson statistic. So we can call up the differenced residuals, the residuals from our differenced regression. and generate our plot yet again. And let's make that a little bit more readable over here. And we see what looks much more like a random variation over time. And lastly, we can call up that Durbin Watson test yet again. So DW test applied to our difference regression. And here we get a value actually greater than two, 2.4, indicating some degree of negative autocorrelation. Uh, we would have to uh, compare that to the, the mirror image critical values on the right-hand side to see if it's significant negative autocorrelation, whether or not we've overcorrected. Uh, but we're certainly closer to a no autocorrelation solution than we started with. Again, there's other issues to be uh, concerned with here in terms of first difference transformations. Um, but there's how to generate the difference data and simple ways to uh, to look for evidence of autocorrelation.